Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for tuning into my video. This is going to be a DIY concrete slab video or even a beginner's concrete slab video. It's going to be a little bit of a scaled down version of what you'd get in the concrete underground or even if you got the concrete slab course. So um, I go into a lot more detail in there, but this is similar to something you'd see in, in the course or the concrete underground. So what we got here is we got a 21 foot by 12 foot garage slab we're putting here and the excavator came in and he grubbed out the original soil he dug that down about 18 inches and then he brought in the base gravel and that's what you see under the styrofoam so he brought in about 18 inches of that base gravel compacted it leveled it got it really nice and level and then he put two inches of styrofoam over that bigger than the slab so 16 by 24 on the styrofoam the slab is 12 by 21 and then on top of the styrofoam, he put six inches of crushed rock. So we got 12 inch thick edges in a six inch thick slab. So he just built up the middle with the crushed rock after he put the styrofoam down. Now we need styrofoam here in Maine. It's code and it just helps keep frost from getting through the slab, under the slab and heaving the slab. So that's all the styrofoam is there for. You don't really need styrofoam to do a slab. But where we live in Maine, we put styrofoam under all our slabs. So if you, don't, if you don't need the styrofoam, you can do this exact same thing without it. So what we do is we get our boards laid out. Um, our two end boards are 12 feet exactly. And then the side boards are longer than the length of the slab. So we can screw the end boards into it. And what I do is I go around and I measure. Like I'll measure 21 feet on the one side mark it and we'll screw those corners together just like what Luke's doing now on this front side I measured over 12 feet put a pencil mark and then we line the boards up on the pencil mark and get it screwed right together right at the the dimensions that we need it to and then in order to get the slab square you know we'll just measure diagonal to, di to diagonal until we get it to where both diagonals are exactly the same and you know, we may have to tweak it a few inches one way or the other and then we know the slab is square so again if you're thinking of doing a concrete slab yourself or if you've never done a concrete slab you know these are the basic steps you're gonna follow to get a slab done now there's a lot involved there's a lot more involved than what I'm gonna be able to talk about in this short video but the, the you know this at least shows you the basics on how we do every single slab we do whether it's a small one like this or whether it's 60 by 30 I mean the basic steps are all the same you know laying out the boards getting them measured screw them together getting it squared getting the forms pinned in place setting them to grade with a laser in this slab you know we put in a matter rebar that's that fiberglass rebar that stuff that 3 8 rebar right there is as strong as half inch steel rebar so number four steel rebar it's rated for the same strength and we just th threw some bricks under it to keep it up off the sub base so again if you wanna if you wanna you know learn how to do this if you wanna learn how to do concrete if you're thinking of doing your own concrete slab I would definitely check out the link for the concrete underground that's in the description of the video or if you could just get the concrete slab course too now the concrete slab course is included in the concrete underground so you get that if you join the underground but as if all you want is just a slab course and you know you buy that and you have it forever you could do that too so we, we got our concrete ordered you know this was this was the probably the next day we don't usually form it and pour it in the same day although you could um, we got our this is early the next morning we ordered for this job I ordered a 3500 psi mix with with fiber mesh fiber mesh is just a secondary reinforcement we put it in all our concrete here in Maine um, you, you don't really need it if, if you got the rebar in it but we always just put it in it's just cheap insurance to help with shrinkage cracking a little bit and then uh, we'll use we use a mid-range water reducer in all our concrete mixes that just helps us uh, pour the concrete a little bit looser so it flows a lot better and it's just easier to pour it's easier to screed it's a little bit easier to bowl float 
So mid-range water reducer, if your company has that, would be a good idea. And then uh, the other thing is we put, we always put a little bit of air entrainment in our concrete in Maine. And if you live in areas that have freezing and thawing, you know, your concrete's going to see maybe if it, if it might get some moisture on it that freezes and then unthaws and then freezes and unthaws, you're going to want a little bit of air entrainment in your concrete. That just helps protect the concrete from, you know, the surface popping and peeling and scaling. So a little bit of air entrainment. If you don't live in a freeze thaw area, then you don't have to worry about that. You just get non-air concrete. Now we're checking out the boards, making sure they're staying nice and straight. That's what those those little two by fours are coming off the the forms. They're just we call them kickers. They're just kind of like bracing. They help keep the the forms in place as the as you pour the concrete in there. It kind of wants to push the forms out. So you got to have some brace in there. And we use a string on top of the board. You can kind of see the string right there. We like to put it right in the middle of the board. You could put it on the inside edge if you want. And we just eyeball that string as we pour to make sure the forms stay nice and straight. Now, be because we do this every day, we have a certain way we screed. Now, on this one, if you have a long enough screed, you can do it both from the outside, like Luke and Eric are doing right now. You can go, Eric's going right off the top of the form, and then Luke's going off the wet pad and concrete because on Luke's side, the guy on the right, the styrofoam was just a tiny bit high there, so we couldn't get the top of the form right to grade. As you can see, the top of the form sticking up about a quarter of an inch or so until he gets to right about where he is now. Then, then the form, we got it right to grade. So you can just screed right off the top of your forms if you can set them right to grade with your laser. And then you could use a you know a longer screed. If this thing's 12 feet wide, you could use a 13 foot long screed or a 14 foot long screed. Just go right off the top. So the concrete driver, you know, technically he's there to work for you. You're buying the concrete. You're the customer. So hopefully you get a good driver and he'll work with you a little bit. Have some patience with you. You know, if you need him to stop, we don't generally like fill it up and then he takes off and washes up and, and gets out of there. We we usually fill up on something small like this. We'll fill about 80% of the slab, leave a, a little low spot at the end in case we get it really high. And then we can pull the high end of the low spot without having to shovel it out. And then, uh, you know, hopefully he'll wait for you a little bit. And then you could back him back up if you need to and just fill in whatever you need. And then you get your concrete really close without making a mess on the outside. So basically that's the pouring. You know, making sure the form stays straight, making sure the rebar stays in place, magging the edges, screeding. And then the last step, you know, would be to bull float it to get it smooth. You'll see that in a second. And then on this slab, we're going to add some anchor bolts in so when the builder comes, he can secure the walls down to the slab using the anchor bolts that we're going to wet set in the concrete. But again, this is like a mini scaled down training video of a concrete slab. And I got many, many trainings of slabs that I've done in a lot more detail. Some of them, you know, are up to an hour long in the concrete underground in the concrete slab course so if you want to if, if you want to check that out again the link for that's down in the description you can see Darren running the bull float over it there's a certain technique to running those that help you when you go to finish now we don't generally leave these bull float finish like this we'll we'll power trial finish these or we'll hand steel trial finish them to get them even smoother and nicer and then we'll add maybe a saw cut or two to help control any type of cracks that may want to develop later on shrinkage cracking you know concrete cracks that's just normal as it cures it shrinks so it kind of tends to want to crack um, probably something this small wouldn't crack but we don't take a chance we'll still saw one down the middle but that's that's the basics of getting your concrete slab formed up and poured and now what we're doing according to the homeowner you know he gave us specific details where he wants those anchor bolts is we're measuring them out. You know, Eric's coming behind me and he's wet setting them down. 
45 minutes. And then, you know, then we'll let this sit for a little bit and get to the finishing process. So the finishing process, I'll have this one, this training in the concrete underground in more detail. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.